us, tell us how you participated in the Bello track, right? Uh, you, yes. Uh, yes. So how, I, what, what, I, I mean, you had some technical problems and so on. Yeah, I understand. But is there something you, you, you could take with you uh, except of uh, or except of that uh, technical uh, issues? Yes, I did because I I am I'm an artist and I I I really like this argumented reality, but I always have the problem that I really like to touch things and um, <laughs> when you are in the virtual in the internet in the virtual world then you can't touch it and um, I think it would be funny to like see something and touch something different. And this is what I like to what I really like to learn uh, learn in this. Uh, but uh, my technical problems were so hard that I only uh, there were eight steps to create something, and I I thought I could create something and then put it into my world and then try to touch it. <laughs> but the things I I had in my mind were not the. Yeah, I could not really um, do it. So, okay. um, but it's. I think it's a way I can go. <laughs> and I did step one. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, Julia, um, it, it's interesting because you know when we speak about code, then we are we are speaking about like material. Code is also material, uh, and. Yeah, you can't touch it with your physical hands and fingers and, and so on. But actually, uh, it's, it's, you know, like material in a way that it gives something back. There is a feedback you get. Uh, sometimes it's an error. It's the feedback. Sometimes it's something you have expected. Uh, and that is the feedback. But most of the time, the interesting things are when the feedback is something you have not expected, you know, which are surprising, which are actually arrows happy arrows or something like that yeah so so therefore i think um, uh, my suggestion would be view it as a material yeah so it's it's nothing immaterial it, it is yeah it's behind the screen most of the time uh, but it, it has the same um, features like material has yeah? and then the other thing i just can tell you is i mean uh, there is robotic, there is uh, all this maker movement, as you possibly know, um, you can, you know, attach uh, like actuators, like motors or something, yeah, um, and then it becomes even more funny, uh, obviously, yeah, so uh, therefore you can bring it back to the material world if you want, yeah, sure. Um, so anyone else uh, I can invite to give some impressions on the sessions uh, before or just uh, throw in a topic uh, which we should uh, touch uh, uh, on. Um, uh, Michael, you also were, yeah, uh, good that you raised your hand. Um, uh, wait, can yeah. I? Yeah. Oh, great, it works. Okay, good. I just want to say, I was also at Bello's workshop, workshop and um, I just want to say Bello ha has done a terrific job. Um, it, it was an amazing, um, <laughs> amazing, amazing uh, didactical sequence of of uh, showing uh, Colab, um, and I think Colab is a is a is a wonderful tool uh, to discover uh, AI with a bit more with a bit of coding. And um, what we what we saw during the workshop is, and that I tweeted about, uh, is that um, half of machine learning is fixing uh, Google Drive path errors. So um, you, you exchange, if, if, you, if you take a tool like Colab or, or some other tools, you exchange some complexity with some other complexity. So now you have to figure out why Google Drive has this super weird path stuff where you, even if you know how to copy files on your computer, you, you don't know how to copy files to Google Drive because it's so weird, it's so different. Um, but it was so much fun and um, I think, uh, yeah, um, again, to Bello, thanks a lot uh, for this amazing uh, tutorial. And I think uh, next time, make it four hours. It wouldn't be boring uh, in four hours with a break in between, maybe. And then we we achieve all the stuff and, and even more. Then. Yeah. 
Yeah, as always, we have been too ambitious, uh, but you know, I, I prefer to be a little bit over ambitious than uh, to, to low, to, to fly too low. Uh, but you are absolutely right. Um, there is a lot of things which have nothing to do with AI or so. It's just to integrate things, right? To, uh, uh, and, uh, but I mean, the nice thing is once you have done it, um, you, you have it, yeah. yeah. So you can build on that. Uh, so this was definitely a little bit too over ambitious. I also was following you guys uh, for some time, and I also thought, well, one of the takeaways for me is we need more time or uh, or a little bit less uh, or a little bit preparation. Yeah. So that all these um, things are prepared already. Yeah. So that, that's a learning for us as well. As I said, I mean, this is a test for us also because we intend to to do this type of kitchen show kitchen. Um, in the in autumn uh, frequently, uh, as I said, please uh, register to on our web on our website, um, uh, and then we will inform you uh, for more of these uh, things to come. Uh, the idea behind is uh, to just explain it to everyone else. Um, the the idea is a little bit with cooking. Yeah, so there is um, people who say, "Ooh, I I I I I'm not able to cook. Yeah, uh, the, the the only thing I can do is." Uh, open the pizza box and put it in the in the oven uh, so and um, by preparing things uh, doing the dirty work already of cooking yeah so and have it all prepared for you guys uh, we hope that uh, everybody is encouraged yeah, to say oh i can cook yeah so even if the the dirty part uh, still uh, has to be done uh, beforehand but we think if you if you eat something delicious then you are more motivated to do the dirty part next time uh, then if you just ju just start with the dirty stuff and the uh, uh, yeah and then you, you never reach a point where you get something to eat okay is there anyone else uh, who wants to jump in and uh, raise something or or tell about experiences uh, be it in the workshops or beyond maxine maybe you also can start because uh, uh, you also participated in in one of those workshops yeah sure so uh as uh, Michael said, I really enjoyed it because uh, uh, Bella did a fantastic job. Uh, and I think I wouldn't have uh, been like, uh, how do you say it? Um, mutig enough, um, brave, brave enough, enough. To, yeah. to participate if it wasn't for Bella because I know he's very patient and kind. So I thought, okay, we might as well take the tricky uh, group. And for me, uh, it was really great because I participated today because I think that uh, for young designers, it's very relevant to like touch on these AI subjects because they will be very relevant in the future. And um, I think it's it's absolutely necessary to also if you're not into coding because I, I think it's rocket science, I still do. But I think it's very important to, to just like start looking into it and then discovering that um, it's maybe parts of it aren't that hard and you get to know people, you can ask for help in the process. So I think that's great. And I'm looking forward to uh, dive into it more. Um, and yeah, so it was great. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to finish, but I'm still happy to have a, a slightly moving uh, Merkel on my screen. So uh, yeah, some slight successes today. So thanks again, Benno. Yeah, very good. Um... Uh, uh, actually, uh, the, uh, uh, two or three things uh, I, 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 I'd like to mention here. First of all, I, I, maybe you should avoid to think of coding as rocket science, yeah? Because who is able to do rocket science? I mean, I, I am not, maybe you do, but I'm not. So think of it as something which is really step-by-step, -step, yeah? And nobody, really, nobody starts coding from an empty screen. Everybody, everybody, even the rocket science coders uses already existing uh, code snippets and uh, combines it in new ways yeah? or, or changes parameters and so on. So therefore don't think of it as rocket science, think of it as something you can definitely reach soon. Yeah? See, Sarah, Kim, Bello, Tom, when they started, when, when, when they came, um, uh, I, I told them, look, it's really beautiful with me. I'm not an asshole. I would never kick your butt. But then next moment, they were already in the pool. Uh, so, uh, and, <laughs> so and, and, and they survive, as you see, uh, even better. Um, they, 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 they do something that they teach it now. Yeah? And this is also something I like very much. Yeah? So that um, really learning by teaching. Yeah? Um, another secret. 
that's exactly what I do. Yeah, I have no idea about anything. Uh, I'm just telling people um, so and teaching them. Uh, and that also uh, brings me uh, a step uh, forward. So, um, yeah, but good. Um, uh, and also, I think everybody who was in the in the in the workshops uh, knows that uh, you have access to that um, to the Miro board. So all the resources are there. Yeah, and that's not by accident, but that is really part of our thoughts. Yeah, we think that open source openness is extremely important. Um, and you can rely also on openness. Yeah. So if you give, then you also will take. You 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 can get all the information. And I think all of them who are in now, be it Tom or Bello or Sarah or Kim, have experienced that if you just shout out in the internet, um, can someone help me please with this, in in brackets, stupid um, uh, question or or problem, you will get answers that's very nice and very good and that should be um also your mode of operandi that you also contribute yeah so even if it's only small things so um who else wants to uh, add something uh, ask questions uh, or put something in the discussion i think we have some 20 minutes left um, so What nobody of you, I mean, we, the first track, uh, Sarah and Kim were actually offering, uh, but nobody uh, chose it, uh, was a lot about these um, text generating uh, systems which are around. Yeah? I think the most crazy thing you can experience is called GPT-3, GPT-3. Go Google for it. Uh, try it or, or, or try to get a hand on. Um, it's really amazing, yeah? So, um, because uh, with GPT-3, you can like speak, yeah? It will talk to you. Um, and the moment you give uh, GPT-3 some input, some starting points, it will talk to you in really fascinating uh, ways. So try it out. Uh, I think this is a benchmark these days. Um, uh, it comes from OpenAI, uh, which is this uh, foundation based in uh, in Silicon Valley, um, um, and uh, uh, they, they they are actually funded by Microsoft, but it's not a Microsoft uh, uh, company. Um, and you can really get some very interesting uh, results out of it. Um, uh, so uh, another thing one should really try out is all these GANs, generative adversarial networks. Yeah which help you to create visuals. Um, so also this is something I, I, I would suggest um, to do. Maybe Tom, you, you have done a lot of work with GPT-3 and GPT-2. Um, why don't you speak a little bit about it? And maybe you even can throw in some interesting uh, examples. Um, sure, uh, just uh, one. Uh, there is a, wait, wait a moment, Tom, there is the question. Um, Peter, can we see some results of your workshop? Yeah, yeah, you can do. Um, maybe um, first, I'd, I'd suggest the following. Uh, Tom, you speak a little bit about the GPT uh, models, yeah, and, and what, what's going on there. And then next, maybe Bello, because uh, you have uh, also access to the Miro board, you can share the Miro board. Is that good? Okay, great. Yeah, maybe <laughs> real quick, uh, GPT-2, we, so I think it was in the beginning of our research project that it just popped up. And it was really fascinating how good it worked and how good it is at like really basic sentence completion and text generation. So in our um, speakers uh, uh, thing that we had going on, we always created little intros where GPT-3 was introducing the people. And it was really crazy what, what came out in the, in the end because um, it was like kind of philosophical. And what I'm using right now is something called GitHub Copilot. It's uh, GPT-3 based and it's working in your code editor and it will suggest really code for you. You just write a comment, write me a function that calculates the time between today and uh, uh, Christmas 2020 and it will just put out the function. It um, 
look to the training data of uh, complete GitHub and build this thing and it's just uh, uh, crazy. So I think in this text generation thing and, and what came, comes out of it, because if you uh, like to, you can translate everything into text. Um, yeah, you, the, the, the uh, possibilities are really endless there with GPT-2 and GPT-3. Yeah, um, I'm just looking for the URL. I will post it in a in a second. We have a very interesting, uh, a very interesting <coughs> master uh, thesis uh, which will be presented next week. But the website is already online. Uh, it's from a student of mine making omelet with AI. So Yong Won, uh, a student uh, uh, originally from Korea, uh, was cooking like hundreds of. Uh, was asking GPT three to provide. Um, recipes, uh, again, we are back with cooking, yeah? So recipes, um, and, ah, okay, thanks, uh, Bello has posted it. Go there, uh, it's really, really fascinating. All of those those recipes come from GPT, G GPT-2, GPT-3. Um, he actually dared to cook it, yeah? Um, and partly where it was possible, uh, physically possible, he, he also tried it, very funny stuff. And it shows how creative and at the same time very structured uh, you can uh, employ those tools. Actually, they are also no code. You just enter a text snippet or a question, and GPT will answer you. Yeah. So this is a, a tip. I think uh, go there. Uh, Bello posted it. Making omelet uh, .com. Uh, He also runs an Instagram uh, account. Um, uh, it's funny uh, and at the same time very philosophical. Um, because as you know, cooking is also very local, very specific, uh, very cultural based and so on and so on. Um, so I like the work very, very much. It's, uh, it, it, the colloquium is next week, so it's a little bit too early to really open it. But since he has published his website already, I can also do it. Um, uh, it's really brand new, yeah. So uh, now Bello, just uh, there was this question, uh, I think it was from Verena, um, uh, that she wants to see what, what people have done. Uh, can you do it? Um, yeah sure um oh no the host has to allow yeah sharing. wait uh, maybe i can do this uh, for you uh well i think you should you should be able to do it uh yeah now it works yeah okay, okay. great good okay so this is our my robot and i guess i'll jump on to our results at the moment. Um, unfortunately, we had not enough time, but three people uh, at least succeeded in creating 3D models out of 2D images, and they were in the process of rigging them or animating them. For most of the, uh, the problems were time or internet connection. And yeah, so there you see background removal and also 3D creation out of this. The next step would have been to uh, apply textures on top of that so that it would have looked something like this. But again, we didn't have enough time. Be Be Bello, sh Be uh, because I think Verena was not part of the workshop. So maybe it would be a good idea to um, just tell a little bit what was the goal? What was the steps? It's also interesting because it, 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 it comes back to that chaining um, mm -hmm. various steps uh, in a daisy chain. Uh, please show that. Yes. So the idea was to you start off with a an image, um, remove the background with an AI model, input the output of the like the removed image, uh, the the image with the background removed into a different algorithm that would create out of it a three D model. This output we then input into Mixamo, which also has a, well, not AI, but it is kind of automatic. So there's some machine learning behind it uh, that automatically rigs the, the model, the mesh. And once this is done, we have an animated mesh where we can in Blender manually, this is a manual step, uh, give the textures. And with this model, this is another manual step we are able to um, put our models together and animate them. Maybe one example would be better to show as a video instead. Uh, I think this was 
why people joined my uh, my workshop because I put myself with Merkel, Angela Merkel in a fighting scene. Um, and basically most of the, the participants in the, the workshop uh, now know how to do this more or less. And yeah, that's what we basically did. So they are almost, as you see, this is Maxi's example, almost there. And she just had some errors that which we would have fixed if we had more time. And the same goes for Michael as well. Good. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, uh, yeah, uh, please sh uh, also uh, show some uh, uh, of the work. Or yeah, maybe you can, uh, Bello, just share us uh, and, and. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I was. Okay, great. You, you can see my. Yes, we do. Okay, so we did um, something um, that we wanted to implement into Zoom directly, the Zoom Background 3000. And it could do stuff like uh, this <laughs> or like this. So you can implement that into your uh, Zoom. And it was really easy. So we used this thing called Teachable Machine. You can see it right here. We captured three different classes. One is empty, it's just nothing. We did like, I think if I roll out, it's empty, empty, empty. But if I do something like this, then applause comes. And if I do this, whoop, whoop, then a party comes up. And this is then implemented into our program here. This is uh, uh, written in P5.js and ML5.js and it's, yeah, it's a little bit of code, but basically what we are doing, we are just loading the images and loading our classifier. And then if the classifier says party, then we output the party image over our thing. And if we say applause, um, it uh, uh, puts in this. And I also put in this empty iPhone screen if it's empty. I had a cook cooking head as well, but. Yeah, you can, uh, you can uh, try out different things there. And with the help of OBS, we did not do that because it's a little bit too technical and it's quite boring, but I put the, um, the tutorial on the, um, on the Miro board, then you can just use it as a camera right here. Um, I tried it uh, this morning and it didn't work because you all also need to retrain the model. And now it's going crazy because I'm doing stuff that I didn't train on. And really fun, and um, also a little bit of this chaining logic of teachable machine, which is really, really cool and really easy to, to use um, with a little bit of code. And then in the end, um, OBS would be the end. And if you like, I can also show you some stuff. Don't know why half of it is gone now. I see it on my screen. I think it's- Yeah, yeah. I, I reloaded the page. So you see some of our participants doing stuff. Um, Kim had some problems with her camera. So she put in this uh, sad cloud and yeah, we have uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Here it's just saying awesome. And me and uh, Sarah and yeah, really cool uh, small workshop and um, it was really fun working with you. Great. Is is someone from the participants in that workshop uh, still in the call and would be uh, willing to tell a little bit about the experience? Um, I think Kim and I are the... Yeah, then um, go ahead. Yes. For me, it was really cool. Um, I do have a little bit of... Uh, coding experience but only so far as like the the basic basics like html and css so that's the most i can do um and for me it was really really cool because it showed me how easy it actually is and uh how yeah how easy it is to combine different things and it's uh one step further for me now so i i progressed a little bit um I did have a little bit of problems with um, the the editor, but uh, yeah, overall it was great. Great. So everyone, I think we are coming to an end because I promised that we will be really ready in time that the next session can start in time. Um, yes, this was about artificial intelligence. No, we did not 
speak about um, the end of the world, the end of creativity. Um, we did not speak about uh, self-driving cars killing uh, innocent uh, grandmothers in the streets. Um, we were not uh, thinking of all this um, stuff we uh, usually hear if we are talking about AI. We were speaking about daisy chaining um, little tools uh, and uh, being still in control of everything of the world of AI and all of this. Uh, it did not take over us, we took over it. Uh, and that is exactly what I wanted uh, uh, to be um, the takeaway for you guys. So um, please don't hesitate to contact us because we are out there. Our mission is uh, with Creative Kitchen to bring uh, creative use of AI to as many as possible people in the world um, of creativity. Um, we are part of this open sharing, so we, we, we don't uh, keep things secrets at all. Um, that's not what we, what we do. Um, and uh, I hope that you had some fun and uh, interesting insights. Uh, and with that, I'm happy to close this session. Um, and uh, as I said, please contact us uh, if you have any question or further uh, whatever. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the three hours you um, took with us. Uh, and uh, now, uh, Sarah, please uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone. That was uh, quite the interesting digestion. And uh, I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to uh, host this workshop as well in the frame of SAI. So I can't wait what's happening next with the workshop series. And it's going to be very interesting to see what you guys uh, come up with next. And I think a lot of people had fun. There is a lot of comments in the chat about how great it was so thank you so much for that thank you thank you very much peter kabel and your team thank you very much for that workshop um i hope that all the participants that went into that workshop uh with a slight idea of a project got some uh help for starting off with their ideas and um uh, I'm hoping that it also would help you to find your teammates for the project that you're working on. Um, and if you want to get more input, please stay in line with the next workshops. They are also focusing on GPT-2 and GPT-3. Uh, they are uh, doing music uh, generation with that. And we will also have some use cases later on with uh, GPT-3 as a, as a dialogue and um, well, a, a more philosophical maybe approach to uh, AI. And finally, the panel uh, with the possibility to have some broader questions uh, on this topic. So uh, thank you very much. Um, please feel free to ask any questions uh, to whom you can get hold on. And if you have questions, also visit Gathertown at the concluding, after the concluding panel. Um, if you have any questions, you can also just write to Sarah or myself or uh, whoever. So um, thank you very much for joining and thank you very much for preparing that workshop. Thank you. <laughs>